Right. So I uh, now come to the uh, Pacific International Hotel Management School. Um, that is the college that I represent in India. We're located in New Plymouth in New Zealand. Uh, New Plymouth is a, a city on midway between Auckland and Wellington on the North Island of New Zealand. Um, uh, we are located in the Taranaki region, which is uh, the, in, the, in the picture here, if you can just see this mountain, it's called Mount Taranaki. And um, this region has been voted by Lonely Planet in the year 2017 to be the second most beautiful region in the world to visit. Uh, this is an aerial view of the college. Uh, these are the accommodation wings. This is the faculty wing where the classes are held. And at the rear here are two restaurants and a bar and facilities like uh, the tennis court and the uh, heated swimming pool are also visible. What makes PIMS special? This is something that's uh, very unique about our college. Uh, PIMS used to be a four-star resort prior to 1995. When our CEO, Mr. Bill McCallum, wanted to set up a hotel management institute, he decided to take over a fully operational running resort and convert it into an institute. This is what sets PIMS apart from other institutions or colleges. We are not a college that teaches hotel management. We are a hotel that teaches hotel management. So when a student studies at PIMS, completely immersed in the study of hospitality. One would be eating, breathing, sleeping, living hospitality when they study at PIMS. So till today, PIMS runs, is, uh, is operated like a hotel. It's a fully functioning hotel run by the students for the students. The students are the guests and the students are the management of the hotel. So in this picture, uh, this front office, to, uh, uh, attendant who's checking in students is also a student. The others are also students. So it's a hotel school run by the students for the students. Uh, it, we provide a unique learning environment, world-class hospitality training, because we were formally associated with IHTTI of Switzerland, and we continue to provide uh, the, same, the same Swiss format in our programs. So you get a Swiss style of education at a fraction of the cost. Personal and professional development, I already touched upon how hospitality skills uh, enhance one's personality, enhance one's career options, uh, because those skills stay for life, whether it's problem solving, teamwork, communication, grooming, uh, one's approachability, the attitude one has towards work and all of that. Balanced education. All PIMS programs provide uh, the three pillars of education. That's an academic component, practical training or operations component, and a work experience component through the hotel in the internship that we offer each of our students. Um, of course, we have an extremely supportive faculty and staff that uh, assist that are there in case a student wishes to reach out to them. International qualifications. Now, this is not just for PIMS. This is for any institute in New Zealand that uh, qualifications that are obtained in New Zealand are valid all over the world, especially in these countries like the UK, USA, Canada, Australia, most of the European Union countries, Hong Kong, because all these countries have signed the Lisbon Recognition Agreement in 1997, wherein they have agreed to honor each other's degrees. So we provide all the facilities that a college would provide, lecture rooms, a library. In addition to this, we also provide facilities that a hotel would have, a reception, a housekeeping office, a laundry section, commercial kitchen, restaurants, and a bar. PIMS undergraduate programs. So we have programs for students who finish class 12 in India or uh, the equivalent anywhere. Um, and also postgraduate programs for those who are graduates. Uh, the bachelor's degree is what we provide at the undergrad level. It's a three-year program. Each year is divided into two semesters of six months each. Um, 
for the first semester of six months, a student would study hospitality and tourism business studies, uh, as well as do operations training, that is practical training in F&B service. So an important thing to note here is that we do not have a culinary program. We do not teach cookery. So it's the only part of F&B is the F&B service part. Uh, as you can see here, this is a student who's doing his operations training. And these are students who are his fellow students who are, who are the guests that he serves. When they do their operations training, he'll be the guest and he'll get served in turn. Once a student finishes his practical training as well as his academic studies, for the next semester, that is the next six months, he would go out into the hotel industry in New Zealand and work in the F&B service section in an approved hotel property for six months. This would be a paid industry placement, which gives him experience as well as a lot of, um, uh, he would stand to earn a lot of money. Year two is similarly structured. It is the first six months on campus with hospitality and tourism business studies and operations training, practical training, this time in the rooms division, which is front office as well as housekeeping. So front office entails that all students have to check in every Monday, check out every Friday. Uh, they are given something called PIMS money, which is like monopoly money. And this is how they pay for services on campus, only notionally, like their meals and their rooms and things like that. And this is how auditing, accounting, and revenue management are taught in a practical manner. Um, housekeeping, of course, uh, one has to look after the upkeep of the campus, as well as the accommodation rooms that are given out to students. Um, once a student completes this semester, he's again sent out into the hotel industry in New Zealand for six months for a paid hotel internship. This time it would be in the rooms division, which would be either front office or housekeeping. And then a student returns for the third year to college this would be an entirely academic year. There is no operations training. There is no hotel internship in this year. And both semesters would be academic semesters. Upon completion of this year, a student would be awarded the Bachelor of Applied Hospitality and Tourism Management uh, degree, after which he gets a three-year stay-back option in New Zealand. Postgraduate programs. So we have a graduate diploma postgraduate diploma and a master's degree. The graduate diploma. Um, this is for students who have completed their graduation, but it has not been in the field of management or in the field of hospitality. So it could be a Bachelor of Arts graduate, a Bachelor of Science, a Bachelor of Engineering, all of these students, if they want to switch to the field of hospitality, they could be condensed the bachelor's degree three-year program into a one-year graduate diploma program, which is at the same level as the bachelor's degree program. Uh, I'll just touch upon these levels when we say NZQA level five, level six, level seven. These are all the various levels of um, education in New Zealand. We are governed by NZQA, that is the New, Zeal New Zealand Qualifications Authority. And um, the bachelor's degrees at level seven, the postgraduate diploma level eight, master's level nine, and PhD at level 10. These are the levels of education in New Zealand. So this year of uh, one year of bachelor of a graduate diploma would be uh, all of these subjects that are covered. As you can see, they include tourism and event management. Eligibility is a graduation in any stream, a 50% score. Um, one needs to give an English language test. Uh, these are the required scores for it. Um, now, with a graduate diploma, which is an entirely academic program, a student might find it difficult to get a job in New Zealand because hotels do, they do not have the manpower or the time to train freshers. For this reason, we offer an operations training module, um, which is uh, additional time at an additional cost. Um, if, one, if a student completes the 10-week operations training module at PIMS, then PIMS will send him for a paid hotel internship for six months, during which he gets a chance to recover the uh, amount that has been paid for the operations training module. After the graduate diploma, student gets a one-year stay back in New Zealand. 
the postgraduate diploma in hotel management, level eight. Eligibility again would be a graduation in hospitality, that's a bachelor in hotel management, or a bachelor of commerce, a BBA or a BMS, which includes management subjects at the undergrad level. So all of these students are also eligible to apply. Uh, minimum score required is 50%. And of course, one requires the necessary IELTS uh, score. The postgraduate diploma, the course outline, it's a one and a half year program. Uh, for the first year, a student would be on campus at the college. This year is divided into four semesters of three months each. The first three semesters would be business studies or academics. The next, the final semester of um, three months would be operations training. This would be five weeks in F&B service, five weeks in front office, after which a student would be sent for six months for a paid hotel internship to a star rated property anywhere in New Zealand, during which time he would get paid. This completes the postgraduate diploma program. If a student wishes, he can continue to complete level nine, the master's applied research project, which is a 15 to 20,000 word dissertation on, uh, on a topic relevant to hospitality. Um, I'll just elaborate on that in detail uh, in my next slide when I cover the master's program. Uh, to apply for the master's research project on, confirm, on completion of the postgraduate diploma, a student should get at least a uh, B plus grade in his postgraduate diploma academics, as well as hand in a research proposal of an approved standard. The master of hotel management ends at QA level nine. So one option is that one enrolls for the, after graduation here, one enrolls for the postgraduate diploma and does the master's program there. Or if a student has a 65% in their bachelor's degree in hospitality or management subjects, uh, he can enroll for the master of hotel management program um, uh, from here itself. Uh, the course outline would be one and a half years of the postgraduate diploma, as well as six months to one year for completion of the research project. Um, during when he's doing his level nine, the research project, a student doesn't need to be on campus because it's not a taught program. So uh, wherever he's working, he continues working and uh, liaises with the faculty online to complete his master's research project. On the, the postgraduate diploma, as well as the master's program, each of these programs have a three year stay back. So what we recommend is that if a student is not married, that he can go to New Zealand and do the postgraduate diploma earn his money during the uh, hotel internship and then enroll for the master's program there and continue working. That would be uh, an excellent uh, uh, course uh, uh, outline for him to follow. Industry placement. As um, through this uh, presentation, whenever I've spoken of a program, I've always mentioned that there is an industry placement component that is factored into the program. What exactly is this hotel internship? It is six months of full-time work in approved star rated hotel properties anywhere in New Zealand. One could be located in any of the cities. Uh, and it's an opportunity to earn New Zealand dollars 20 per hour. That is the minimum wage there. Uh, when a student does his hotel internship, he's treated as any other New Zealand employee. There is a contract signed between him and the college and the hotel. Uh, one works for 40 hours a week. And uh, if there is any overtime, then the student would be paid accordingly. So the objectives of the industry placement, one very important objective is that it gives a student a chance to earn while you learn. Um, you're still on your student visa. Um, you're still learning. However, you're getting a chance to earn. So if you do the math at 40 hours a week at $20 per hour, it come, for six months, it comes to over 20,000 New Zealand dollars that a student can earn in six months, which is a large amount of money. And uh, it gives a very quick return on the investment that has been made in the fees. 
provides a student with international work experience, exposure to current work practices, a chance to get to know people from the industry, and most importantly, it provides a job opportunity. So if a student's really good at his placement, he's very often absorbed in the same property, provided they have a vacancy. So thanks to this, we have a 96% employment rate. And in case a student is not happy with the property or if uh, the a hotel doesn't have a vacancy, then we have a job placement cell that assists in finding jobs. Uh, these are some of the properties where uh, uh, students do their placements. All right, part-time work. When you study in New Zealand, you uh, get a chance to work for 20 hours a week part-time when you are studying. This includes the hotel internship time because you're still on your student visa. You work for 40 hours during your internship, but you work, you can work an additional 20 hours a week part time. So this comes to roughly 1500 uh, 15 to $1,600 um, a month, which is more than enough to look after one's living expenses. If one wants to shop, travel, go for a movie, go out and eat all of that, 15 to $1,600 is a lot of money and it's more than adequate. So the entire amount that they earn during the, that you earn during your internship can be saved and uh, used towards uh, paying your next year's fees if you want to study onwards. All right, so looking for PR, a lot of our students that go there, we do invest in an education abroad. We do spend, say, one, one and a half years, or if it's the bachelor's degree, it's three years, after which we get a three year stay back. So, you know, we're looking at spending four to five years minimum in New Zealand. And one might want to settle down there. New Zealand does give the opportunity to apply for PR and to get PR. Um, so it's a point-based system to be eligible to apply. Um, you need 160 points to qualify and points are assigned for age qualifications, et cetera. For instance, if one is under 39 years of age, it's 30 points. If one has completed a postgraduate diploma level eight qualification, it's 50 points. If one has completed, gone on to do the masters, it's an additional 20 points. So uh, if, if you're not working in Auckland because they want to decongest their cities, then it's an, it's an additional 20 to 30 points. If you have reached the level of assistant manager, restaurant manager, anything that mentions manager on your uh, appointment letter, then there's an additional 20 points. So it is fairly easy to notch up these points. And usually students manage to uh, qualify for PR application within two to two and a half years of their stay there after completing their program. Uh, when you apply to our college, what we need is your 10 standard and 12 standard mark sheets and passing certificates. In case one's applying for a postgraduate program, it would be degree results. Uh, the English language test, IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, all are accepted. Uh, a CV, a statement of purpose, which is an essay that you write on yourself. Uh, work experience, if there is any, and of course, a copy of your passport and your photographs. I'll show you some uh, photographs, uh, some visuals on PIMS. That's the lobby entrance, the lobby, the front office, one of the restaurants where students do their F&B service training, the other restaurant, the commercial kitchen. Again, this is meant for F&B service training. It is not for culinary training. Uh, the heated swimming pool accommodation. Like I mentioned, we do offer accommodation for students who wish to live on campus. Uh, for the first two, first semester of year one and year two of the bachelor's degree, compulsorily students have to live on campus. As you see, we offer twin sharing accommodation. The rooms are spacious, well ventilated, carpeted. Um, they have an ensuite bathroom attached. They have a uh, um, mini refrigerator, a tea coffee making station, a workstation. Uh, like I said, it was a resort earlier. So the accommodation is extremely comfortable. That's the student's lounge. It also has a pool table. And uh, some of the students at PIMS. Uh, so study methods in New Zealand are slightly different from what they are here. Here we're used to our uh, 
uh, professors walking into the classroom, giving us a lecture and we make notes and we reproduce these notes for our exams. Out there, it's different. There's a lot of, um, the you know, it's based, it's more application based, a lot of case studies, a lot of group discussions, a lot of projects and assignments that need to be done either individually or in groups. That's a student doing her F&B service training, um, front office training. That's the PIMS money I was talking about, the play money that is notionally used for services, to pay for services on campus. Housekeeping. All right, so to sum up, why is it a good idea to study at PIMS? Uh, PIMS it, over the last 25 years has um, uh, established an excellent reputation for itself. Uh, students all over, uh, hotels all over New Zealand uh, welcome students that have trained at PIMS. Uh, we offer academics, practical training, and industry exposure in each of our programs. We have a 96% employment rate, and 85% of our students are promoted within a year. This is another very important point to note because entry-level jobs are at the operations level, but we are offering hotel management programs. Um, all of our uh, courses have subjects like communication, marketing, research, uh, management, finance, uh, HR, logistics, all these are management subjects. So while entry-level jobs could be at the operations level, we expect that our students should be promoted within a year to higher positions. So of course, valuable work experience during the industry placement and a chance to earn while you learn. Right, so I come to an end of the presentation and I will be happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Ida. Thank you again for that wonderful presentation. Uh, one, basically, which intake is open for the current programs? All right, so we have four intakes in a year in February, April, July, and October. Um, this year is out. So we are looking at the first possible intake being February 2022. Um, after that, we have one in April and in July. It all depends on uh, the COVID situation. As we know, it's extremely uh, unpredictable. Uh, just as we think we're settling down and things are opening up, there's some new variant that pops up. So it's all, um, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess as to when exactly it will completely come under control for the world. But we are looking at February 2022, and we are accepting applications for Feb 2022. Okay. Any news from the New Zealand government on this? Um, well, as you know, there was one case that came in through Australia, and they are under a strict lockdown again. Um, Auckland is under strict lockdown. Certain other areas are uh, slightly more uh, flexible. Um, they are in um, the process of vaccinating the entire population, and that should be through by uh, hopefully November this year. Um, until uh, two weeks back, all they were talking about is not opening borders, uh, how they must protect their citizens, etc. But uh, two weeks back, the New Zealand Herald reported uh, the Prime Minister, Ms. Jacinta Ardern, uh, speaking about how they were planning to open borders in a phased manner. So um, it is, they're already accepting applications for returning students, again for Feb 2022, for those who have completed one year of the bachelor's degree and need to go back and do their second year or third year, or someone who's completed their year one of the master's degree and they go back to uh, resume their study. And once that is successful, they're talking of quarantine, they're talking of negative COVID tests, all of that before, um, um, before a student goes from here. But they are actually talking about it and considering it because um, like all over the world, uh, a lot of industries have suffered uh, due to COVID, whether it's education, whether it's uh, hospitality, hotels, tourism, all of that. So they are looking at next year definitely opening up. We are, we are optimistic about February. I think uh, April might be a little more likely, but we are keeping our fingers crossed. 
Okay. Perfect. So that's a good news that you know basically people are looking to get, get into New Zealand, but uh, you know once things open up, probably they would send the application across. So that's a very good news from to here. Absolutely. And uh, you have mentioned all those points basically, you know, about various things, including PR and everything. Uh, is there any change in the policy basically for international students of late? All right. So uh, the visa office is shut. The website has not does not reflect any updates on their policies. We would only know this once they open after this COVID situation is under control, and uh, if they are if they are tweaking any uh, rules and re uh, requirements, then we would get to know about it only then. As of now, it's status quo. Whatever's the information on the website is the information that we've had for the last uh, couple of years. That's wonderful. Vague. Thank you for all the information that you have given me and uh, for sharing here on the platform. There's a, one question from Mustafa who says, better course, which, are, which is a better course, management, marketing, et cetera, what will you suggest? Uh, so Mustafa, have you done an undergrad program and uh, are you eligible for the postgraduate program? Yes, complete. Yes, given is 12th. 12th. Okay, so then you would do a bachelor's degree program. Uh, now, if, if you are interested in hospitality, if you like the whole aspect of, uh, you know, being in a dynamic field, not being stuck behind a desk, being on, a, on the shop floor, interacting with people and all of that, then um, uh, I, I would definitely recommend hospitality because I feel at home skills that your know, marketing, by the way, is also one of the subjects that we do teach. And it is a management program. You would, uh, you know, a lot of your skills would be honed if you did this kind of training. And uh, it makes for excellent career prospects, excellent employability in New Zealand. So if you want to stay back in New Zealand, it's a great idea to do an undergrad program in hospitality because this is one of the thriving uh, uh, career options out there. You, you would find it very easy to get a job very easy to get promoted, and uh, you could make a career in hospitality in New Zealand. Any application fee for, uh, for applying? None at all. We do not. So, uh, in fact, I wanted to talk about this, Richard, when you said that once borders open up, students would be comfortable applying. They can still keep their options open. They can still put in an application, and uh, we would be happy to process it. We do not have any application fee. And uh, uh, when we do give an unconditional offer, we would ask a student to pay 750 New Zealand dollars to reserve their seat on the course. But we are even waiving that during this COVID situation. And we say that once things open up and you're ready to apply for your visa, just pay that uh, refundable admin fee of $750 prior to that. So there okay. is absolutely no cost. One could work on one's application, work, you know, get the visa filed together. And uh, once things open up, hopefully by the end of the year, if the visa office opens up, you would be in a position to hand in your visa application, to lodge your visa application. Otherwise, you'd lose a little time getting it together once borders open. Perfect. You know, that's basically, you know, that's a good opportunity for students to apply to check whether they are eligible. Once they are eligible, they are given time to pay the fees. They don't have to pay the fees. If basically the border opens up, then they are told to pay the fees to confirm the admission, then they can apply for the visa. And uh, probably basically once things open up, then hospitality would be one of the booming industries because right now they are basically, you know, there's not much activity happening. So one of the fastest growing industry could be the hospitality industry where people are just wanting to go out and uh, basically enjoy. So also one opportunity that uh, PIMS offers is whatever you sp uh, spend on the fees, later on you get an option to recover, whether it is through the placement, which is six months, and plus basically you are allowed to do a part-time job. So good opportunity to basically you know get a practical exposure, a practical experience, and also to earn the money. Thank you very much, uh, Rita, for all the information that you have given and for helping our students to basically understand about PIMS. I'm sure there would be few applications who are in, uh, would be applying. In case you are applying, then please basically meet the team counselor. They would basically schedule a Zoom appointment and can help you with this process. Thank you very much again. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you for this opportunity to interact with your students. 
it's really a pleasure. I love what I do. I love the field of hospitality. I am a, a person from the hospitality field. And um, it's, it's really a pleasure to connect with you as well as uh, all your students. So all of you, I wish you the very best. I know COVID is very uh, uncertain and we all kind of get shaken up, but even this shall pass. Uh, this will get over, we will all get back to normal and uh, you know, there'll be a renewed vigor in the whole, uh, you know, there'll be a new charge in the whole world when we all come out of this. So uh, just hang in there and uh, yeah, all the best to all of you.